Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. With Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention, when behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's gospel provides us with a great picture of Joseph. Because as we know, there is very little about Joseph that we can find in the scriptures. But this one passage of six verses tells us that he was a person of many dimensions, many possibilities. And so in looking at Joseph today of St. Matthew's Gospel, perhaps we can discover some of his behaviors, his dimensions, his attitudes, and put them into our lives and our own ability to father and to nurture Jesus the Christ because he wants to be born in you and I as well. And so let's look at Joseph first as a quiet dismisser of injustice, a dreamer, as a receiver of life. Because when Joseph realizes that Mary is with child before they have lived together, he decides to divorce her quietly. Here is Mary, a woman he truly loves, so much that he wants to marry her, and yet in the midst of it, he's willing to divorce her quietly. He does not commit himself to her, nor does he remain or scream or shout out at her or condemn her because of what was said. But yet when faced with that reality, with that conflict, Joseph reacts with passion. He just quietly lets things go. Do we have that ability? Is there a quiet dismisser within each of us? Are there events or moments in each of our lives which, although obviously unjust, we just ignore? Think about your relationships, your friendships. Think about at home or at work, in the community, in the church. Do we get involved or do we keep quiet, ignore it? Do we feel uncomfortable? Within Joseph, there was a quiet dismisser. Does one live within you and me, in our lives, in our relationships, in all that we say and do? But Joseph is more than that, because Joseph has the ability, the capacity to dream great dreams, to see things differently, Imagine envisioning that your wife has conceived a child by the gift of the Holy Spirit and that that child is going to save the people of the world from sin. 
and that he is the son of God. Joseph obviously didn't just stay simply with what he saw, but rather he acted, he responded, he did something. And so what is your dream? Where is it that you look and imagine things differently? Where is it that you might say, things do not have to be what they appear? Think about this. We all have had the experience of asking someone, how are things going in your life? And the person will respond, oh, the same old routine. How lifeless that answer is. And we've had the other response, I'm sure, as well, where we're flooded with a person's dreams, their hopes, their goals, their excitement for life. And which person would, would you rather be? Joseph was a dreamer. Are we in touch with our dreams, our hopes? And the third dimension to Joseph today is that he is the receiver of life. Because Joseph follows his dream, he receives Mary into his home as wife, he takes in life and trusts it with acceptance and warmth. Are we in touch with hospitality? a caring dimension of each of our lives. I have a little story I want to share with you. A woman had an autistic son, and the boy would spend hours moving in a disoriented way, making all kinds of strange noises. And the mother tried to teach him motor skills and normal responses. But she also tried something different and unique. Because for an hour a day, she did what he did. She moved as he moved. She repeated the sounds that he made. This very unusual method worked because the child felt accepted. He no longer felt like a stranger in a strange land. And it was in that way that the mother really did welcome the boy into his home with acceptance and joy. Very gradually, that child overcame his autism. I'm sure there is an, a, a dimension in all of our lives in which accepting and loving and being kind are lived and shared. Joseph was in touch with this dimension of his life. Are we? And so today, we hear how Joseph was entrusted by the father with the gift of his son. Joseph is a complex man, a dismisser of injustice, a dreamer, a receiver of life. We know he's not perfect, but he was God's choice to nurture his son. And Joseph attended to God in his life and obeyed God's words to him. Because to obey means to listen deeply to the word of God in your heart and to be true to it. This is the obedient faith to which St. Paul was calling the Gentiles. Let us listen deeply for the word of God which is written on each of our hearts and let us be true to it. Because this is the holiness that we are all called to. Because within us Jesus awaits birth. Jesus awaits life. He is within our very imperfect lives, yours and mine. But the Father, who has created us in his image and his likeness, has entrusted us with the spirit of his Son. And so it's up to you and I to nurture him as Father and to bring Jesus to life within each of us. We need to use these final days of Advent as an opportunity to discover the Joseph within our hearts, our lives, our voices and hands. And so as the week will wind down quickly, as we look to all the other things that will go on, we are truly challenged today to be like Joseph. And hopefully we can translate Joseph into joy, into service, into concrete acts of love for one another as we prepare and await the glory of Jesus Christ, 
the Son of God, the Savior born into the world. Let's use these last days to prepare the way, to be the herald, to become the Joseph, to bear the life, to be the giver of joy, and to truly celebrate all that God has given to us. Joseph did. May we follow and do as he has done.